This is a battle of the cheap four-wheel drive SUVs, but which one of these is gonna be right for you? The Mahindra Scorpio or the GWM Tank 300? Stay tuned and you'll find out. G'day, my name's Matt. This channel's called The Right Car, and in this comparison video, we're doing things a little bit differently. If you've seen my detailed video reviews on either of these cars, well, you already know all the stuff you really need to know about them. But in this review, I'm gonna compare them and see what they're like against one another. Look, there's only five grand difference between these two vehicles, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the pricing and specs in just a sec, but then we'll do some on-road driving and some off-roading. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to figure out which one of these might be the right 4x4 SUV for you. So stay tuned, and if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. Let's get to it. This is the GWM Tank 300. This is the Ultra Spec, so it's the higher grade version of the petrol models at $50,990 drive away. That's national drive away pricing. Comes really well equipped for the money. You've got 18 inch alloy wheels with Michelin tires, full LED lighting, including LED daytime running lights and fog lights. And it does have some really amazing interior tech and design. You've got a pair of 12.3 inch screens on the inside. You also get heated and cooled front seats. You've got climate control and leather trim. This thing looks like a Mercedes G-Wagon on a budget on the inside, and it is very, very special feeling. The Mahindra, not so much. This one is the Scorpio Z8L, so it's the top spec version of this model range. Now, it comes at $45,990 drive away. Again, that's a national drive away pricing, and you also get LED lights and 18 inch wheels and fake leather interior trim. You get a smaller media screen, and you don't get any of the wow factor in terms of the interior design. Look, it still looks okay, but it doesn't feel necessarily as special. And when it comes to these two vehicles and safety technology, well, this thing has basically everything you can possibly get, including a five-star ANCAP safety rating, and this doesn't. It has no active safety technology at all. It does have a global NCAP rating of five stars, but that's a very different testing regime, so it doesn't include any of the active safety tech. So, when it comes to spec, well, this one seems like a much more appealing car. And also when it comes to warranty, both of them have a seven year warranty plan, 150,000 Ks for the Mahindra, unlimited Ks for the GWM. So there are a bunch of considerations that you wanna keep in mind, but in my mind, the extra five grand gets you a lot more car in this instance. The thing about the Tank 300 is that there's so much that it does well on the road and a few things that it does diabolically badly. So let's talk about the really bad stuff first. It's the emergency lane keeping system. Uh, you have to turn it off every time you drive the car if you want it off. And trust me, you will want it off. It almost like ping pongs the car across the lane and it just doesn't really know what it's doing. So I've been turning it off every single time I drive the car, which is a sequence of touching the screen six times or something like that to turn it off, unless there's a shortcut that I haven't figured out. It's the most annoying thing about the drive experience of this car, in fact. So yes, it does have an annoying lane keeping system, but it's also got the benefit of a really, really good array of safety technology beyond that. So you've got autonomous emergency braking, which will brake for pedestrians and cyclists and at intersections if it doesn't think that you are going to make it through a gap. And you've got blind spot monitoring, so it'll tell you what's behind you. And you've got recross traffic alert, so it will basically warn you if there's something about to cross your path when you're reversing, even brake the car for you when it does that. You've also got adaptive cruise control. So it just feels like you're getting a far more advanced on-road drive experience than you do in the Mahindra. Otherwise, this thing's really good. It doesn't feel like it's a serious off-roader, like with a uh, body on frame setup. It feels, well, as good as some of those other uh, I guess more conventional SUVs in the mid-sized SUV segment. I mean, you can't hide some elements of the off-road chassis. It does have a little bit of a clumsiness at times over really sharp bumps, but it's not to the point where you go, oh, I couldn't live with that. No, actually, I could easily live with this vehicle. I think it's really, really good in a lot of different ways. The ride 
the handling, the steering, all those sorts of things combined into the driving dynamics. Yeah, way better than you're probably expecting it will be. It looks boxy, it doesn't drive like a boxy four-wheel drive. That isn't to say that it is you know, a corner carving masterclass, but it is still pretty good when it comes to the handling side of things. Although it doesn't have anywhere near as direct steering as the Mahindra. So it's a little bit slower to turn around um, at a standstill or turn around corners or whatever it may be. The brakes, right? They are very spongy feeling and the nose really dips when you thump your foot to the ground. Like, you really feel like it's pitching down into the road in front of you. So it's not the most reassuring braking experience. And also, look, this engine, I mean, I wouldn't have thought that a two litre petrol engine would work so well in this type of application. Yes, it's turbocharged, which is part of the reason it does work so well in this application, but it's just really, really well suited to this job. It just really has a nice amount of urgency to it. Another consideration is that this car is quiet. It's like you can hear the engine a little bit, but you can't hear much else. There's not really too much rattle or vibration or noisiness in this cabin. It's quite a nice experience. Well, it's a two liter petrol turbo engine in what is not a light SUV. I mean, it's got four wheel drive hardware underneath, so it's not, you know, tippy-toeing around, it's sort of, you know, plonking its feet down everywhere it goes. So it's heavy, um, and the fuel consumption has been pretty high. I'm gonna put some figures on your screen now. You'll see the official combined figure for the Tank 300, and now you'll see what I saw over this week of testing, including that off-road drive that I'm about to show you. So, yeah, I mean, you might not do off-roading all the time, but hey, I've also just done a regular on-road drive and I only saw about two liters or two and a half liters per 100 better. So it's not necessarily frugal. Now you'll see the official combined cycle fuel consumption figure for the Mahindra and what I achieved over this mix of driving, including that off-road loop. So yeah, the Mahindra definitely has the advantage when it comes to fuel consumption. The Mahindra's drive experience, well, it is a huge change from Mahindra's of the past. And it's actually a pretty nice drive on road for a vehicle of this size with this kind of intent and capability. So let me tell you why I think that's the case. Well, it has really quick and direct steering, which means that it's very easy to drive at urban speeds for parking duties and also dealing with roundabouts and that sort of thing. It just makes for a livable, easygoing experience. And then there's also the ride comfort, which is surprisingly good. It does have a firm edge to it, uh, but it does have also quite a connected feel to the surface below. Some people might find it a little bit bumpy, but hey, it's a four x four SUV. It's designed for a lot more than just driving around the suburbs like I am now. But also, it's the braking of this car, which I really appreciate. Compared to the GWM, it's got a really positive feel to the brake pedal. So you can basically just step on it and it feels like it stops very quickly. It's got very reassuring pedal feel as well. And that means that it does make for a pretty nice urban runaround car as well. And also, this diesel engine, wow. It is an absolute corker. It's really, really punchy, and it offers heaps of grunt when you need it too. So you don't even really have to think about uh, what you're asking the engine to do uh, for the most part, because the transmission can be caught out at times in some situations, which can be a little bit annoying. And also I had one little fault with this car the other day where it just refused to go any faster than 32 kilometers an hour. It was foot to the floor, and that was as fast as I could go. It was um, quite frustrating because I was in traffic on a major Sydney road when it happened, so not ideal. And you probably just heard a bit of vibration through the cabin there as well. That's something that you really do have to deal with a fair bit in this car. It does have um, a less refined experience to the driving aspect because, look, it just feels 
a lot more of the road surface. You do have a lot more vibration in the cabin and that diesel engine is kind of uh, rattly and especially compared to the tank's uh, petrol engine, which is really refined and smooth revving. This is kind of a bit gruff. Another thing I guess you should keep in mind with the Mahindra is that, well, it doesn't have any of those active safety technologies. So you don't have adaptive cruise control where it'll adjust your distance and your speed based on what's in front of you. You don't have lane keeping assistance where it'll help you stay in your lane. You don't have blind spot monitoring to tell you what's behind you or rear cross traffic alert to tell you what's behind you when you're backing out of a driveway or something like that. So. Yes, it is falling short on the technology front. Uh, and for some people, that is gonna be a deal breaker. For others, it might be a deal maker because yeah, the GWM's application of some of those technologies is not fantastic. But personally, I would much prefer to have the active safety technology and switch it off, even if it means switching it off every single time I drive the car, rather than not have it. Uh, because, hey, it could mean the difference between something going bad or something not going bad. Yeah, how good is this? The Tank 300 is a weapon. This thing is phenomenal off-road. And let me tell you, we've thrown some stuff at it today and it has basically been able to get out of every problematic scenario or situation that you might face if you are off-roading in your Tank 300. Because this thing, well, it's got a lot of tools in its belt and look, I might be a tool driving it, but it is spectacularly good off-road. Why I'm impressed? Well, it manages to be refined and comfortable and composed and yet offer a level of technology and hardware that well is phenomenal value really like you just get so much for your money in this rig uh, it's super super duper value for money look it does have a different feel to it to the Mahindra it doesn't necessarily feel as uh, intact with the surface below, but it also has an element of, well, refinement that the Mahindra doesn't. So uh, it does feel a little bit more um, detached from what's going on. And sometimes you want that. If you've been off-roading for hours and hours on end and you just want to feel a bit more comfortable, then yeah, this car certainly has that on its side. It does blend usability and day-to-day -day driving and off-road driving probably better than anything else at this kind of money and like you know you'd have to be buying a five-year-old Toyota Prado to be able to get that sort of comfort control and ease of use but also serious off-road ability and capability too and it's really quiet as well like you can barely hear the engine at all in this car whereas you know the Mahindra's diesel so it's a bit more of a rattler and yeah you can certainly hear it and even feel it as well so there's a bit more vibration through the cabin in that other vehicle this car has proved to be pretty bloody handy when it comes to the off-road stuff you know, you've got so many different modes to choose from. You've got high range, low range. You've also got a bunch of different drive modes that you can pick. Um, a lot of them you have to put your car into four wheel drive low range for, which is a little bit annoying because I imagine that you don't want to always be in low range because, well, it puts extra stress on the car and uses more fuel as well. So um, yeah, you just have to keep that in mind. It doesn't have as many quick, easy uh, off-road modes that you can just jump into in high range got a slightly softer edge to the ride so it does feel just a little bit more spongy uh, over more serious bumpy bits you don't have anywhere near as much feel through the steering as you do in the Mahindra but it does have lighter action to the steering at lower speeds you sort of don't get the same sort of reassurance that you do in the other vehicle so now, we're going to do a very tight turnaround here, um, a very, very good camera system in the Tank 300. There's probably about 50 different modes that you can choose from. So if you like technology and you like the idea of being able to see everything around the car and even through the bonnet over the top of the car, you can have lines on or off. 
you've got different modes for different ways to see in or through or around or in front or behind or 3D. So there's a bunch of different options for you to play with when it comes to the camera. I don't particularly like the 3D mode. I much prefer to see a 2D view. Uh, but so for this next trick, I'm going to put the car into low range. So there we go. We're in low. Then you engage the off-road cross-country mode or something it's called. It's basically hill descent and ascent control. And then you hit another little button below it, which basically is designed to help you do really tight turns. So if you find yourself in a bit of a precarious situation where you're at the end of a road and you don't want to go any further, this can help you get out a lot easier. So it locks the inside rear wheel and helps you turn around a lot easier. So just go back. The annoying thing about it is though, you have to re-engage every time you switch between drive and reverse. Well, I've had to at least. Maybe that's uh, not an everyone's problem, but, and I put it into neutral as well. So put it back there. Now we've locked back in. It takes a little bit of time obviously, but it is a pretty neat little bit of tech. So just accelerate out and you can, see and feel and hear the rear inside wheel start to graunch and grab the surface and help you turn around in a tighter spot. Now this little section here has caught the car out a couple of times so let's see if it does it again this time. No, so if you leave the hill descent or hill ascent control on it basically will just walk you up and down hills don't even really need to touch the throttle or the brake in that situation. In a few different times I've been up and down there, stopped a little bit on the steep part and I really had to think about what was happening next and had to lock in the rear diff as well because uh, otherwise it was just scrabbling madly for some kind of traction. But hey, a lot of technology here and it does feel like a much more high-tech drive experience for off-roaders who want that and who want to play with diff locks and all that kind of stuff. It's very, very cool. So here we are in the Mahindra Scorpio and if you can't tell by the fact that I'm moving around a lot more in my seat, this car feels a lot more of what you feel in a uh, four-wheel drive. So. If that is what you appreciate, if you like being able to feel what's happening at the front axle and at the rear, um, yeah, you're gonna appreciate this. And look, you just feel so much more. I mean, I keep saying feel because it's an experience that I'm having right now. I am feeling the tires going over the little rocks in the surface below. I'm feeling the suspension doing its job. I'm feeling the steering in terms of like, feeling what the tires are doing, what bit of grip I've got, how it's grabbing down on the surface. And I can totally see the appeal in that if you are going to be spending a lot of time off road. It does come at the cost of, I guess, overall refinement, um, which I mean, if you're going to be living with the car on a day-to-day -day basis, it's still a pretty refined vehicle, as I said, in the on-road section. But um, for off-roading, it is just a little bit firmer and rigid. And like, I don't know if that's a problem though. I, I honestly think it's pretty good. The Scorpio does feel like it's got more ground clearance. It isn't touching down in the middle underneath the car as much as the GWM does. So that's a little bit of extra peace of mind. So when you're just sort of looking around, trying to find your way down something a bit precarious, you can easily just pick a line. The steering's nice and reactive as well. It's got a very natural feel to it. So you can easily plot your way down something that you wouldn't dare go down in, say, an Nissan X-Trail or something like that. But yeah, this thing makes it pretty easy now we'll do a turnaround here uh, just to get back up this hill. So into reverse. Now the thing about the camera system in the Mahindra is that it has a bunch of different angles, but the resolution of the cameras is not as good as in the GWM. So you've got a few different angles that you can choose from when you are reversing or even switch it to the front camera, which does make for a uh, much better view in front of the car as you would expect. Uh, but look, it's not the best camera system. So um, if you are by yourself, 
I mean, relying on it might be a little bit riskier than if you were to rely on the GWM's camera, but I think the thing that is appealing most about this SUV is it's got fantastic approach angles and departure angles. So you don't really have to even think about the front end touching down. I'm just pushing up this gully here so I can basically turn around and it's doing a really good job. Same at the back, it's very bluff. So you don't really have to think about wrecking your bumpers or anything like that. Now, I've been up and down this little craggy bit a couple of times now and in the Mahindra, it has an auto locking rear differential. So when you get to the point where the wheels start to slip, it will apply the locking differential, lock the wheels so that you can make sure that you maintain progress. In other cars, you might have to press a button and think about it. Whereas this, we'll just do it now, should just basically pick up. It's got a bit of wheel slip and then we're up and out of there without even having to think about it. It locked in and pushed us through. So if you're a bit more of a novice, I reckon that is gonna be very appealing because it means that you don't have to think as much about you know, the buttons that you have to press and the modes that you need to be in. And for instance, we're just in four wheel drive high range, not having to muck around with different drive modes or low range in that sort of situation at least. It's got this sort of almost innate intrinsic uh, sure footedness uh, that is really reassuring. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure that you will too. It just means that you can basically go from the showroom floor and come out to a place like this in the Blue Mountains and you will have a great day of off-roading. And look, we didn't get stuck. I wasn't gonna try and get either of these vehicles into a situation where we couldn't get back out, even though we had all the recovery gear with us on this test. Um, and yeah, it was just one of those things that, you know, I wouldn't do it in my own car, so I'm not gonna do it in someone else's car. You've got a few different drive modes that you can pick through here. So we're in mud and ruts at the moment, turn the wheel and we'll end up in cactus, whatever cactus is, that must be sand. It's just that the uh, center screen here now is showing the distance from the parking sensors. So it's overridden what would otherwise have shown up on that screen, which is a little bit annoying because in the GWM, the uh, distance measurement comes up on the screen where the camera is. And for me, that seems like a more sensible spot to put it because that's where you're looking if you're looking at the camera, you're not looking in front of you as well at the same time. If you encounter any of those sorts of different scenarios, you're gonna be able to hit one of these little buttons here and go for it. Um, and you can do it in high range four wheel drive as well. You don't have to go to low range like you do in the tank. So, I mean, I guess that just adds to the mindset that this car does have a few more thoughtful ways of doing things for those who aren't necessarily interested in doing serious off-roading all the time. So could be a really good choice for you if that's you. There you go. I hope that was fun and informative and entertaining. It certainly was for me. I got a lot out of this and I reckon that I have come to a conclusion that if it was my money, I'd be buying the GWM Tank 300. I just think it blends on-road civility, off-road capability, and well, I like the look of it and the feel of it and the interior of it more than I like the Mahindra. That's not to say that this is a bad 4x4. In fact, it's really bloody good value for money. And if you are sold on it and you like the idea of having three rows of seats, well, it could be a really good choice for you. But tell me what you think in the comments section below. Which would you pick and why would you pick it? And if you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.